Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazarov's chess channel and welcome to our Gary Kasparov series. So in this series we're following Gary Kasparov's life and his chess career from the year 1981 till 2000 and today we're continuing the series again with the 1983 Kennedy's quarter final in which uh, the legendary beast from Baku met uh, Viktor Kocho, really a great uh, player this Viktor Kocho was and this game also shows really the skills of uh, again Gary Kasparov because uh, in the first game uh, in this particular line that I wanted to show you today it was a Catalan opening Gary Kasparov didn't find I think the best ways how to get out of the Catalan I think uh, Victor Korchon had some counter-attack opportunities I've covered uh, so far one game in the Catalan with the white pieces played by Gary Kasparov now we will see again an improved version of the Catalan and uh, here Gary Kasparov I think played a more more aggressive approach Still, of course, uh, Viktor Korch had also some opportunities even in this game, but uh, this game was, I really, I think, really a tense one as Viktor Korch had to win this game because Gary Kasparov had two wins, Viktor Korch had, had only one win with many draws, uh, so this was, I think, the critical moment of the quarterfinal stage. So let's check out now the game. Uh, d4 played by uh, Gary, uh, knight to f6 by Korchnoi, uh, c4, e6, and again g3, the Catalan opening. And the Catalan, I've said, uh, it's a very, very aggressive opening, but I think there are many positional lines uh, with black pieces th that can really simplify the position, that can equalize the position. I used to play the Catalan, but stopped uh, because uh, I think it has also too much theory here. d5, bishop to g2, and now we have d takes c4 played by Victor Korchoy. Okay, knight to f3, uh, a common idea of whites. First of all, we have lost the pawn, but now the idea is to play knight to e5, liberating this long diagonal for the light square bishop, and then recapture with uh, the pawn with the knight or with the queen, with some ideas, queen to c2, followed with queen to c4. And I've mentioned also in my previous analyzed game of the series that this idea knight to e5 takes uh, and then knight takes c4 or queen to c2 uh, queen takes c4 is okay because uh, first of all when you recapture the pawn here on c4 then you have this of course on such a control but in order to gain that i think uh, you will have to lose at least two more tempos uh, to get your pawn back so that's why uh, it is an idea to get the pawn central control as i said but still you can make that happen only by creating some more tempos in the opening and we know that the tempos are very important uh, in, in chess opening so knight from b to d7 we have castling and now rook to b8 this move the stockfish engine already doesn't like which is really incredible it's still main theory but you see now the problems of this move rook to b8 the idea is again clear the first positional idea of black is to go uh, rook to, uh, uh, the move b5 supporting our c4 pawn and also get out of the range of the bishop because as i said we want to play knight to e5 and then uh, maybe knight to c4 but this idea uh, can be stopped with the move a4 and uh, now there are now positional problems in black's position because the main goal now for black is to play something like b6 bishop to b7 and compete with this uh, with this bishop on light scores but it has really some troubles and Gary Kasparov will show really how to beat uh, this particular line how to battle uh, against this line here after move b6 Gary Kasparov played the move knight to d2 you don't want to play of course knight to e5 now because uh, after knight takes e5 maybe d takes e5 you're forced to trade off the queens on the d file and now the position is more and more simplified although you will probably uh, get your pawn back on on c4 but i think still it's a positional battle uh, that's why knight to d2 uh, with the same idea not to trade off the knight uh, and here uh, e5 played by Viktor Korchnoi you see now the difference between e5 and c5 you may ask yourself why didn't Viktor Korchon play the move c5 if you play c5 instead of e5 then knight takes c4 can happen c takes d4 and now after queen to d4 you see we have now a really weak square here in the position it's of course the d6 and you would be forced to give up uh, your bishop in an early stage of the game after bishop to d6 queen to d6 first of all you need many many moves um, uh, in order to secure the king and still some knight to c5 ideas are not working in order to maybe further simplify the position because your rook is hanging so that's why it was the correct choice here by Viktor Korchnoi uh, to um, to play the move e5 instead of c5 now we have knight to c4 he takes d4 and queen to d4 now you see this knight to d6 idea doesn't work as, as we have the square still protected by the c pawn so bishop to c5 uh, queen to d3 and now castling was played knight to c3 okay let's stop it and evaluate the position um as i said black will try really to simplify the position uh with the move bishop to b7 but when that happens 
uh, after potential rook to b7, your rook is really on a, on a weird uh, square. It's really locked there on uh, between your own pawns. This bishop, I think, has still a great activity, but it hasn't, I think, such a great activity as this bishop, uh, F, as the bishop of Gary Kasparov, because he can place the bishop on g5 and create really this annoying pin, with ideas then to further, after potential bishop to g5, to further expand here uh, with the pin, with the move knight to d5. So there are now positional threats, and as I said, rook to d1 is also an option to get use of the d file. So okay. Black can simplify the position. This was played in the game now by Victor Kochan, but after bishop takes b7, queen to b7, uh, rook to b7, queen to f3 happens, and the rook is now suddenly hanging. You have to lose another great uh, tempo in order to um, to protect your rook or to get out of the range of the queen. In the game, Victor Kochan, I think, played the more inaccurate move, queen to a8, uh, which gives, I think, a little bit. Uh, the tension on the light horse, but it gives also uh, the queen some headaches because the queen is a little bit stuck in the corner and you don't want to have your queen like that. Uh, maybe rook to b8 uh, is, um, I think, maybe slightly better. But I hope you realize, again, uh, even after this positional trades of light horse bishops, still you're facing many light horse problems here on this side. So far it's not possible, but as a long-term plan, maybe knight to e5 and then knight to c6 could work. Maybe something like bishop to g5 and deflect uh, somehow this knight from the defense of the e5 and get our knight here on the c6 where this would be, I think, very, very annoying to handle here for Victor Kochan. After the move, queen to f3, as I said, queen to a8 was played and now bishop to f4, simply uh, creating a new attack against another weakness. It's, of course, the c7 pawn and now a6. We have e4 played by Gary Kasparov. We have rook to a7 and now knight to d5. What we want to do is, of course, to get our pawn on a very, very active square. If you try something like knight takes uh, d4, d5 and e takes d5, you could maybe counterattack with knight to f6, but now you get simply rook to d1. And uh, we can also proceed here uh, after something like maybe rook to, d, uh, rook to d8, bishop to g5 is again, I think, the serious, serious threat uh, that black has to face. Uh, we would simply give up, I think, uh, the bishop for the knight even if black uh, goes back here with the bishop i think we can immediately take bishop takes f6 bishop takes f6 and now simply playing b3 cementing our knight uh, on this very active square after something like b5 again i think you could face these problems around the square c6 you see this bishop although has a good diagonal but again in this particular line the bishop would simply aim into nothing so that's why uh, this bishop's activity is not so good so um here, uh, let's go back. Uh, after the move, um, queen to f3 and queen to a8. Bishop to f4 was played as at a6. And now e4, knight to d5. Here, b5 was played by Viktor Korchno. You could maybe even try here the move uh, queen to c6. But it's very risky because, again, knight to e5 can happen. Uh, you would be forced to maybe further uh, trade off some pieces. And again, this bishop would simply attack the very weak knight on, uh, on f6. So... In the game uh, here, b5 was played. And of course, you don't want to take a takes b5 because you're facing some tactical problems here uh, on the a file. The queen uh, will then be liberated. The rook will be traded off uh, here. And uh, there are, as I said, really some troubles. Here uh, in the game, knight to uh, a5 was played by Gary Kasparov, who wants to simply get use of this very weak square c6. In black's position, we have uh, b takes a4. Okay, it's a... Uh, uh, one pawn here for, of, by black, but it's not a problem because Gary Kasparov can now really proceed with his attack. Uh, rook to c1, attacking the bishop on c5. We have uh, bishop to d4. A better idea is maybe here knight takes d5 finally, although we, you have seen the problems even after trades of pieces and after something like rook to b8. It's not possible to, of course, counterattack here on the b file because, again, you're meeting this knight to c6 problems. But okay, in the game, bishop to d4, played by Viktor Korchnoi. He's trying now to get uh, this pawn on b2. He wants to, to deflect more pieces. And Gary Kasparov simply takes. Rook takes a4. We have bishop to b2. And okay, Viktor Kochnoi has now an extra pawn. But now you see this setup of Gary Kasparov. Basically, all of the pieces are on good squares. The rook is, of course, on a semi-open c file. This rook is very, very active on the fourth rank and also on this uh, on, on this file. This knight decentralized. This knight can, of course, get use of the very weak c6 square again. Here, knight to e7 played by Gary Kasparov. We have king to h8 and now rook to c2 attacking the knight. In the game, queen to e8 was played. Even if you try something like rook to e8, 
it's not a problem we will simply play this again idea knight to c6 and you see your rook is trapped even if you try rook to b7 we'll simply take it out with another knight in the game um uh, here got it, uh here victor coach and i right queen to e8 but again rook takes b2 okay you can take the knight but then again you get the fork on c6 you see how problematic uh the pro the positional trades of pieces sometimes can be uh black basically um, hoped here after this uh, light core bishop trade that uh, the position is more simplified but even if you trade it off you see how you face this light core problems on the queen side and gary kasparov of course used them knight to c6 great fork and you're simply losing too much material queen takes uh, a7 e5 simply attacking the knight and now uh, bishop to e3 played by kasparov queen to a8 a simple trade of pieces of course we want to simplify the position we want to undermine the pressure because with the queens on the board the position stem is maybe can be complicated although i think even if the queens would stay on the board that gary kasparov would win this game but as i said it's sometimes good when you have the advantage to simplify the position well, we have rook takes a8 and now f4 play by kasparov knight to e7 and here after the move rook to d2 in this position Victor Korchner resigns. So what you do? Knight to f8 uh, is of course not possible. Uh, that's the only move that you have. If you try, of course, uh, here rook to d8, then again we simply take out this pawn. So the only good move is uh, maybe knight to f8, but then you get here uh, bishop to c5. You will lose one of these knights, uh, or you lose this pawn on a6. So you could try maybe try uh, here uh, rook to e8. We will simply take it now. We can take this pawn and. It's of course a completely winning end game here for white so okay this was the last game of the quarterfinal stage gary kasparov won this match game against victor korchner with three wins against one win and uh, some other draws now we're facing uh here a new top grand master in this very nice series it will be uh gary kasparov against vasily smyslov in the candidates 1983 finals it will be a, also a very very cool uh, finals and then of course we'll see the super match between uh, Gary Kasparov and Anatoly Karpov. So okay, I hope that you like this miniature play by Gary Kasparov. If you want to see more of his games, of his career, check out my uh, Path of Glory series uh, by Gary Kasparov. And if you want to see the best chess games of all time, check out my best chess games of all time series. And if you like maybe some engine games, check out my analyzed games uh, play by computers. Here's also the link. And if you like this content, you can also subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos and chess is the best, of course.